uh, I like to produce uh, scientific film because I am not a scientist myself. And I, I like that uh, the science film explain me the world. And um, I had a project with uh, Jonathan Tavel, who is a scientist, to explain what the first men who arrive on a, another planet or another moon, in the case of Titan, uh, will see. So it would have been very easy to uh, reconstruct absolutely uh, 3D uh, env environment uh, by using our imagination. But what we wanted to do in that film is to show the reality. So uh, we knew that the cassini wiggins probe uh, uh, collect a lot of uh, scientific data on Titan, uh, which is a, a moon, the main moon of Saturn. And we wanted to use this, but not in a imaginative way, in a realistic visualization of that. So uh, we tried to find uh, somebody who was able to help us, and it was Optis, who, uh, with Vincent, uh, we reconstruct, we uh, interpret, we analyze that data to give us the tool to reconstruct image uh, that can be seen by uh, classical and common viewers. Uh, to present the arriving of, on um, on uh, Titan. Um, what can I say more than this? It's that for me as a producer, it's really easy to uh, to do uh, image, false image, fake image. But on that very very specific project, what is really impressive for us, it's to have the real real visualization and I think it's the first time it's, it's, it has been made like that from scientific data to TV image. My main goal on that film is that I wanted that the, the viewer uh, see exactly the same thing that the first human being pioneer, the first astronaut uh, will be able to see when he will arrive on Titan. Uh, so of course we recreate a very uh, basic uh, uh, place because uh, uh, we reconstruct a, a place to live, we reconstruct a, a, a jeep or a rover, uh, we reconstruct a place to work because the first uh, human who will arrive on uh, Titan will be a scientist and will be uh, in charge of constructing a, a, a place to live for the next human uh, uh, coming to the, ti to, to the moon. So uh, I, I wanted that the viewer of my documentary was... Uh, so, sorry, I want the viewer of the doc documentary able to feel what the first man on Titan will feel. Not what he feels, but what he sees. And I think it's really, uh, really important to show that uh, it's not a very big uh, space, place. Uh, it's a, a small unity and a small place to live and to work and to, to try to spread out on that uh, planet. Uh, I know that uh, it's a, a really important point uh, for a lot of people now. It's what uh, will uh, be able, um, what human will be able to set up to live somewhere if one day our planet was not able to sustain us. And so I don't know if it will be on Titan, I don't know if it will be very soon or very in a very long time, but I think we gave a quite realistic way of uh, thinking about that with that uh, documentary. The real challenge on that uh, documentary was to, uh, to ask to people who usually don't work together to work together. Uh, the optic, optics team, the post-production team et alors production in Paris, the director Frédéric Hamad, the scientist who uh, wrote uh, the documentary, Jonathan Tavel, and also uh, France 5, the French public channel dedicated to knowledge, uh, NHK, who was a public channel, the Japanese public channel, who was a partner in that uh, adventure. I think that all of us, we wanted to, uh, to have a real collaboration and a real exchange in, within, uh, within people who usually don't work together. And I think that's uh, one of the real uh, uh, successes of, of the film and that's why 
uh, people like it so much. Uh, on, on French uh, channel, it was twice the audience, the, the usual audience for that slot, and on NHK too. So people are really be, being touched by the scientific aspects, but also with the emotional and the human aspects of the, that the film described. Aptis is a, a virtual prototyping uh, software editor. Uh, we do um, have a, our differentiator is we reproduce uh, light in virtual exactly like in reality. So our belief is that um, physics-based uh, 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 virtual world will recreate uh, the real world. So you are able to experience in virtual your virtual product like in reality. That's uh, the, different, uh, uh, the differentiator of Optis. Uh, here we had to uh, use the data from, uh, from a probe uh, that was on Titan uh, and, uh, and recreate uh, a virtual world that mimics uh, how a human would experience Titan. That was a very challenging uh, for us, very challenging and very interesting. It's fascinating. Virtual reality is a, is a very uh, fantastic educational tool. So we will be able to train uh, for example, the astronauts uh, re in virtual reality train them um, uh, to, to, to perform the task that they will have to do uh, uh, in their mission. So that's uh, a, very Im a very important what's next. And also we can, uh, we can imagine uh, to, um, to make uh, experience, uh, experience a movie and be part of the movie uh, in virtual reality, live, the, live in the movie and be a, a character in the movie. So that's also something interesting for the future. In 2005, the Huygens probe landed on Titan and uh, with the DISR instrument, uh, it took uh, one image of the surface. A very narrow field of view, a very small definition image because the probe was made in the 90s. Um, and so from this single image, we could not do really a movie and, uh, and we couldn't imagine uh, an entire scene. Although in this image, we see some pebbles, we see that uh, the probe landed in a in a lake bed, dry lake bed, uh, but uh, uh, with uh, some detail. But we needed more information than this picture could offer. So we recreated, based on the scientific data uh, acquired by the probe, uh, some spectrum polarization and some images as well uh, to have information about how the light is scattered in different directions. Uh, these uh, new images that represent what a human would see if standing on Titan, but uh, with a larger field of view. So we have actually a virtual reality experiment with a 360 degrees view of uh, a probable surface that uh, uh, a human would see uh, on Titan. We talked with a mission scientist who designed the instrument that went on Titan uh, with uh, the Huygens probe. And uh, we got, got this data and uh, we integrated them into our ray tracing uh, 3D model. Uh, so there is uh, the sky model for the illumination of the scene. There is the surface model for the reflection of this light on the surface and the scattering of this light. And which also gives us the color of the surface. And uh, finally, there is uh, the atmosphere uh, of Titan that has a, a very uh, thick haze, but on the surface layer, it's quite uh, uh, thin and we, we have a good visibility actually, contrary to what we could think. And uh, this haze layer allowed us to, to see how the lights from the distant mountains and, uh, and the, the lake beds uh, uh, rims are uh, attenuated and uh, lose their contrast uh, because uh, of, of this uh, haze layer and the atmosphere in general. Working with the scientists was, uh, was really great and uh, talking to the people who landed the, the probe on Titan, uh, it was fantastic. And getting their data was a, a bit of a challenge for us because we usually uh, work with the data that we measure on our own with our hardware. Uh, there we were taking just tables of numbers, very big tables, for different wavelengths, for different uh, altitudes, for different uh, azimuths and so on. And we had to recreate uh, this uh, virtual world from the, all this data. And it was a bit hard to, to talk with them because they use very accurate scientific uh, information with precise units. And we 
also do, but with different units. So we had to convert uh, data, make sure we speak the same language on every data that we had, and we had a lot of data. Uh, so it was a really great experience. Uh, and uh, also, uh, yeah, we saw that uh, the, the haze is not, uh, is not that thick uh, near the surface of Titan, uh, contrary to what we, we could think, because we cannot see the surface from, the, from space or from Earth. So we could, uh, th before this mission, we thought that uh, the haze is present everywhere, and near the surface we cannot see like more than uh, uh, 100 meters or, or a few yards. Uh, but uh, it, it, we ac actually have a very good visibility near the surface. It's uh, more in the altitude at uh, 40 miles that uh, we have a very thick uh, uh, layer. But um, it's, uh, it's really great to see these images, and we can also see the sun uh, through this uh, thick atmosphere reaching the surface we see a very small it's like a tenth of uh, the size of our of the sun on earth so it's a very small spot but very still bright uh, spot uh, through this atmosphere uh, we, we weren't really sure uh, I mean as as the public and uh, not as a scientist uh, we weren't, were not really sure if we could actually see the sun directly through this atmosphere and we can because the simulation showed that it's still uh, number of times brighter than the average uh, uh, light brightness of, uh, of the sky.